Great. So please welcome Phil Humbledahl. All right. Thank you. Good morning, guys. Thank you for letting me be here. Um, my name is Phil Humbledahl. I'm a solution architect at uh, CollabNet. And um, I get to do this presentation because the general manager who was supposed to got sick. So I appreciate your patience, but we should have a fun ride. I'm more of a technical person. Um, so afterwards, if you have questions on the side, I'll be happy to answer anything you have. So um, today we're going to talk about first, who, who is CollabNet? By the way, anyone ever heard of CollabNet? All right, good, thank you, there's a few of us. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit today about you know, how we're able to do this DevOps that we're talking about, specifically release management, how we can do that across the pipeline. And the fun thing is, is that that sounds really easy for you know, all the people who have already converted to DevOps, who, who know what Kubernetes is and knows what containers are, but what if, what if you're not in that world yet? What if you wanna get there? There's a way that we can help you do that by automating some of that stuff, and we'll talk about that in details. And again, on the side, we'll, we'll have some questions to be able to help us out. Now, CollabNet's been in the application development space for about the last 15 years. So if you ever heard of Subversion, even if you haven't heard of CollabNet, that was ours. So we are the founders of Apache Subversion, and since then we've gone on to doing Git and TeamForge, uh, moving into more of the application of lifecycle management space, kind of linking it all together. And if you've been here, we also were talking a little bit earlier about how we've done this new product called uh, Digital Lifecycle Management, DLM. For those who've been to our cube, we're, we're talking about those who are in the DevOps space, tying all those different tools together and moving forward. So those are some of the things that we're doing. And one of the most recent things that's important is that we just now entered into an agreement to be the reseller for a product called Clareve. Just curious, anyone ever heard of Clareve? I didn't think so. I hadn't either. They're a company that was founded in 2010 uh, in Spain. And um, we saw them, they kind of get an opportunity to present to us to show the technologies ha they have. It's a ARA kind of tool, but it has the capabilities of doing you know, what we talk top down and bottom up sort of DevOps. And we've just entered into this relationship so that we are the single sole provider of this technology in the, uh, in the space. Now, the nice thing about the technology is they were reviewed by, of course, Gartner and Forrester and some of the other um, reviewing analysts. And the nice thing about it is Gartner put them in the visionary category. Now, for those familiar with the Gartner Quadrant, visionary means they have great ideas, but their ability to execute does not put them in the leader's quadrant. So by partnering with CollabNet, we believe we can get them in that leader's box because they have great technology and with our user base and our you know, background in this space, plus our market penetration, we believe that we're gonna be able to get them in there. And it's unique, and Clareve is unique in the ARA market really because of the ability not just to do ARA traditionally, like you, know, you send something to a build engine, you point to what you know, ARA tool you wanna use, and push it into service, but again, its ability to integrate to other things, as we'll talk later in the legacy space, and really more importantly, its ability to cross all these different platforms that may need to get aggregated together in order to really push something out. So that makes it very unique in that space that it has a lot more capabilities than some of the other ARA tools out there. So now as we're looking at kind of the, the life cycle, the automation process, again, most ARA tools start in that corner of release. Now, Clareve is a really good tool for release management, but the challenge is we're talking about we're able to support more legacy as well as more modern technologies. You know, again, Kubernetes, Docker, stuff like that. So how we integrate how we integrate Clareve depends on the type of systems that you have. Since it's based on release management, release management typically talks, as I said, about starting off in like a build engine. But what if you don't have any automated builds? What if you're building more on a waterfall or a legacy method? It's a lot more difficult to automatically kick off a build and make it work. So for those that have those more legacy type systems, what we do is we can integrate further back in that life cycle to grab artifacts and grab things. Basically almost set up tickets to be able to manage that more from a top down perspective. And it gives us the ability to integrate the different tools to kind of orchestrate and put rules on how they should work and how they should uh, work together in order to do that delivery. 
and able to deploy changes to, again across all of these different um, all of these different platforms. Whether they're you know the enterprise, everything from Salesforce all the way to you know traditional uh, you know older legacy systems on mainframe, AS four hundred, and even IoT. So it has some pretty cool technologies. So why Clarive? Well, what we liked about it were, is very simply, IT organizations that need to compete and take advantage of DevOps face a lot of challenges, right? For those of us that are already in DevOps or that we have our systems automated, it's a lot easier for us to change new technologies, move up from just like continuous integration to more continuous delivery. But if you're just now starting or you're just, you have legacy systems, you're in an industry that may not move, maybe you're not the guy who just builds websites. Maybe it's embedded materials or maybe additional, you know, additional software that needs to stay at the platform and the age that it is. Releasing these applications is complex. And, and with Clarive, we're going to be able to help you get past that and be able to start, at least at the beginning, setting up processes to actually automate that process of delivery. And, and existing people who are in that world still have many manual processes and many tools. And again, a lot of these tools aren't the automated type that we're familiar with today. So getting them from where they are, using the tools they have, to getting them into a development pipeline is something that we're going to be able to help them with. And, um, at the end of the day, having no visibility and control just basically means how do you integrate all these tools to see where you are in that pipeline? Right now, it's, it's a very manual process. And so Clarive kind of really helps in those three areas to help us you know, understand what those processes are and actually add automated process to it by linking those things together and those tools together to help you actually create more of a DevOps delivery chain as opposed to the manual one that may exist already today. Now, how do we do this? The, the whole concept of Clarive was actually built on what they called lean application delivery. And it was about, in the Clarive world, they talk about how they can do it from the very beginning all the way to the very end, from more of the top-down view. But it also works, as I said, if you're just looking for an ARA tool, Clarive works just as well. It's able to pick up package management, release management, coordinate mainframes, all of that stuff to actually deploy your application. But the unique thing about Clarive is for those who don't have those automated systems together, very simply, we're able to, again, pick up those artifacts at wherever place that they're available. So if you don't have a, an automated way of building, maybe we're going to pick up the source code directly from the repository and build it through Clarive, through a process of maybe staging different build servers and stuff like that, and having approval trains, almost like adding ITIL again back to the pipeline, just to give an automated process where I can start collecting all the data and metrics for how we deliver in the system. And so this is what we're able to do with the Clarive tool is actually lay a process on top of it. So as we talk about what are the, the three things of how do we do that, and then that's the, the delivery life cycle. We've talked a lot about what is top down. Um, top down very simply is the old fashioned way or a, a conservative way of saying this is what we want to do and then we break down the work into having things done. So we want to release this product in this month, this day. We're going to break it down into releases. We're going to create requirements. And all these tools are kind of like top down assigned. And then the build doesn't happen whenever you do a commit. The build happens at the end of the development life cycle. That's more of a top down approach. While the bottom up release is more like we use today where you do it like in an agile methodology. You know, you, you check in the code, it automatically builds it. You get a new war file, a new ear file almost immediately. You can instantly test it and see if it works. But again, not everyone is able to do that. But what we can do with Clarive is actually tie those systems together to start doing that. And then as you change tools and start to modernize, maybe moving from different methodologies, like maybe moving from more of the uh, waterfall world to the agile world, we can actually help you with that process as well as uh, automating those tasks. So when you're doing waterfall, I mean, continuous build and deploy, that kind of doesn't happen, right? We have to, usually it's the, everyone gets their code together, you try to get it to build the first 12 times and figure out what, whose code isn't working right and getting the build going. But what we try to do is by setting up this continuous build and deploy, we can actually help start building that deployment pipeline. So while you're still doing legacy and you're still doing development the way you have, 
by setting up different rules on how we can do builds and deploys, it actually will help start modernizing. And then as you have that pipeline that releases to the end, we can start substituting tools, build engine types, deployment types, maybe even containerization to actually push it to Docker. We have connections that go out to web services, Amazon, all the ones that you would expect. Um, and so very simply, we have a lot of different capabilities to start working on the back end while you're still changing your process on the front end. And when we're talking about provision and uh, configuration, um, it also has a lot of capability with internally provisioning infrastructure. This is, again reaches across all kinds of multiple platforms, uh, but it also has the capability of using your existing technology. Just say you know, you're interested in or a puppet or a chef or something like that. We can also tie into those tools to help build some of that automation on the back end. And because Clarive actually has its own CMDB, we actually have an idea of like what your endpoints are and all the information available. So it makes it a lot easier for us to you know, script out and automate the, uh, the building of uh, the infrastructure. So we've talked a lot about how we're gonna kind of take legacy and put it together, but this is why we do that. When we help create and manage deployments, it's really about the multi-technology deployments, right? The main reason a lot of people are not able to move into the, the modern website, you know, um, CICD world is frankly have a lot of multi-technologies. And this is where Clarive has a lot of value. In that process of releasing this technology, we can do things that we can bring together multiple types of applications or multiple parts of an application in order to deploy it. So we could do things like, uh, say you're in a financial and you need mainframe databases changed in order to deploy a web application that maybe you're gonna push on the web sphere. And the web sphere actually talks to the database to get information. So we can coordinate those kinds of deployments, the multi-technology deployments, where it actually does the mainframe parts first, the web parts second, maybe any database changes that you wanna to add to it, and kind of coordinate that all together. And then it's nice is also this can link in not just to, as I said, mainframe, AS400, and distributed, but it also has IoT stuff that we can do with that as well. So it's a pretty interesting thing. It's all, again, about being able to put process on top of your release that it doesn't exist currently through automation. And then as part of that, being able to build out the, the back-end pipeline to, again, take a lot of the manual steps out that you currently are having to use. So we always talk about you know, what is DevOps, and we always hear the different stories. It's, it's a cultural change. Yeah, it is. It's, it's about letting development, and QA and operations work together in a process. In the traditional world, I mean, you have Agile, all about change. You have ITIL, all about reducing change. There is an argument there. And the nice thing about Claire Eve is it actually tries to help that process by establishing, I would almost say, again, ITIL sort of methods across that pipeline so that there are handoff points that where they don't have automated tools today that are working together, the automation can still take place. But the difference is by laying a process on top of that. So you can create processes that, you know, you start a project and you can break down the, the elements of the project to go across the planning, the development, the QA, and the production streams. So I can get, again, reporting on all the activities. And because the product has the ability to integrate with these products, even wrap around some of the legacy products, I can bring in some of that data from the transactions that took place and create some interesting reports. The fun part is, again, the backside's the easy part, where we're plugging into the different sorts of, you know, Amazon Cloud, Google Cloud, um, Azure, all of those back-end elements, even like Docker things and OpenShift and those are some, or OpenStack, rather. The whole point is that, you know, we can start modernizing the back-end while still keeping your process intact. And then as you start to modernize, we can change out those, uh, the different tools as you want to start modernizing and creating more of a, a CICD paradigm. So how are we different than some of the other ARA tools out there? Now, the, the fun thing is, you know, again, you know, we just, we're just now in partnership with Claire, Claire Eve, and they're like, we can do it all the way across the entire enterprise. Well, they can, it's true. And again, for legacy, that's a really important thing. But if you're using just ARA, Claire Eve also is a very good tool in the bottom-up sort of methodology to automatically get things. 
And so that's what makes it really interesting is the breadth of platforms that it can touch, the ability to actually deploy across these multiple platforms and coordinate that deployment. So it has some other interesting things in there. You know, the ability to, you know, do rollbacks. You can also like visualize and you can simulate an actual test of a deployment or a rollback. Just actually simulate the endpoints and see what happens without actually having to deploy in order to test it. So some of those capabilities make it really interesting. And I love the, the, the platform breadth comment. It says, take care of everything from cloud to IoT to mobile to cloud again, because cloud's important, <laughs> and uh, to mainframe. And that's really one of the cool things about the product is its breadth to go across these different um, things. But another interesting part is not all services are available all the time. So it also has the ability to do scheduling on these types of systems as well. You can schedule when a mainframe job runs, and it works in a queue, and so it's a little bit more than just the a matter of like scheduling or, or just putting a job to run. Another thing is that it's a single tool. You can use this tool in a more legacy format to actually see the process tree from the very beginning to the very end. And again, it, it lays a process on top of your development stream to help, again, try to automate those things that are not automated. And, uh, and the hybrid processes part is really about supporting both Agile development, where it's all about creating unique elements of code, being able to develop it, build it quickly, test it quickly, and move it out into the world. And also supporting the waterfall methodology, where things don't exactly happen at that same speed, where things are built maybe in different silos and then have to be integrated together. So it supports both of those and gives visibility, of course, as well. So two quick customer stories different types of customers. Now, this was a legacy customer that already existed, uh, already had an infrastructure built up, and it's funny because the legacy one is the Agile story, while the Greenfield happens to be using Waterfall, so I find that kind of funny. But the interesting thing was, in the legacy element, what they did is they had an existing set of uh, existing set of ideas where they, where the development team wanted to use Agile as a methodology of going forward. But the problem was the back end, the, the technology would not allow them to do that. Again, they had mainframe parts as part of it. And so the whole point here is that we were able to, you know, with Claire Eve, be able to integrate the, the development of the, the scheduling and how they're going to break down the work in the development team and be able to help them push that into the, um, into the build and deploy and uh, release management side. So in this case, Clary was used more as a kind of a traditional ARA tool. So we picked up the individual deliveries from the different lines of business. Again, it was like application development, database development, and mainframe. And we were able to kind of you know, get all those individual sources, test each one of those sources, and then Claire Eve do the packaging and releasing and manage that out through the entire process. So, so more of a t traditional continuous delivery sort of methodology. And we're able to kind of get them out. That's one sort of more of a modern sort of approach. And then in the more, in the more waterfall sort of approach, it was a lot different, right? Even though this was a greenfield one, what they did is they used, um, they used the term wave to represent a time period. Like my first six months, this is gonna be wave one, and wave one, we're gonna work on these applications represented by projects. And then in the projects, we would say these are the, these are the release the releases that we're going to do, like reverse, release version three, release ver version four, and then inside that release, they would create these individual releases that would have all the different requirements that they wanted to release within that process. And so it's a little bit more of a complex because they had no way to tie the, the wave idea to the project, to the baseline, to the release, to the deliveries, a way to kind of lay a process on top of all of their tool sets because there was no automation, there was no build automation that was happening. When you checked it in, you checked it in. It never was integrated to automatically build. So they used a workflow on top of that entire process to manage how that works. At the end, I actually have some screenshots that I'll, I'll help show that a little bit better. But the point is, is that you can break down all of those individual processes, and they require sign-offs and testing. And after all those happen, then we were able to walk through, you know, Bev, test, and Altaprod using a more waterfall delivery method. Again, this is adding automation to a process that the tools don't actually do the automation. 
Um, can I put it another way? Here's another example where basically the requirements were actually sitting in another tool using HP Service Management. We've also seen some that they used uh, ServiceNow as the, the driver of the task that they wanted to complete. But with Clareve, you can actually start linking into those lower level requirements and start being able to create that process flow that goes on top. So from there, we were able to segregate it into demand, analysis, and then for the development, we were using uh, Subversion and TeamForge to actually do the planning and development. And then from there, anytime a defect happened, they would actually use Jira as a way of doing defect management. So we were able to bring in those different tools into the development pipeline by creating an overarching process and then move it out from QA to close. And again, representing all the different uh, elements of the build and uh, deployment within that system. So here's some nice views of information you can get from Clareve. At the, uh, the large pie charts, it's basically showing you all the scheduled releases that we have. And inside all of the, the diagrams, you can actually click into any one of those artifacts and drill down when you look at you know, the releases, what makes up the releases, where the mainframes or LPARs are, AS400, all the distributed information. We also keep information and metrics on, uh, if you look at the, the top or the bottom left or right, um, you can actually see those are the, diff the things that we have in the different stages of QA. And the diagram right next to it kind of shows the frequency of uh, releases during uh, the time of day. So it's very nice is that it keeps the metrics of all the information on top of it. And what's really nice to have too, and what was really beneficial for this, for this organization was the ability to see the release pipeline and the scheduling of how releases are gonna happen. Before they weren't able to do this, there was no way to track the, the release schedule, the release pipeline, and there was no way to see all the different projects they had going on because their tools weren't automated. But by adding the process that Clarif provides on top of that tool set and integrating with it, we were able to give them the visibility they needed to understand what products are gonna release and when. And to the right of that, you'll see it's an actual calendaring view, very simple operations view of what, uh, what releases are going in what day. And again, by clicking into that, you can see the resources and all the breakdown work that went with it. And the bottom is very interesting. It represents um, how you schedule the, uh, the resources that you're gonna deploy to. Again, mainframe or the other resources. So it gives us an ability to schedule when these resources are available. And then as the jobs run, you can actually, if you chose, you could say run when the job is available or you can have it scheduled at a certain time. So kind of in conclusion, um, the nice thing about Clareve and what that does is it supports both top down, which is setting a process on top of your tools, and it also supports bottom up, when you're talking more of the CI and CD method. And that mode, it would be probably more of an ARA, ARA tool that we would look traditionally today. But in the top down mode, it would be you know, a lot more of process laid on top. It has the ability to do continuous build and deploy across multiple platforms and be able to release, um, release information with a full impact analysis. Again, when you look at a deploy, you can test it and actually see how things or what systems are gonna be uh, integrated with and to make sure that deployment's gonna actually work before having to actually do it, including rollback. You can also do rollback with that as well. And Clareve also has the ability, again, to work with infrastructure provisioning, whether you're building up containers or you're just working with things like, you know, iron itself or mainframe, it also can work in that mode as well. And we have a, a list of, you know, all the artifacts and things in your network to be able to create that and set rules and of how that should provision and work and link it all together. So with that, a lot of information, I know. But what Clary was really cool about, as I said, is for those customers who don't have tools that do this through automation already today, you can set a process on top and be able to automate these activities. All right, guys, appreciate your time. Any questions, I'll be over the side.